Why is the Honda CB400 one of the most desirable motorcycles in all around the world? Well, it's a good thing you asked, because that's what I'm here to do today, answer that question. So lean back, kick your feet up, and let me lead the ride today. The Honda CB400 SF is considered one of the best motorcycles to learn how to ride on due to its reliability, its comfort, and handling. It truly captures the essence of the classic universal Japanese motorcycles from the 1970s, all the while being infused with modern and contemporary technologies. In this video, we're going to cover the juicy stats, review the history and changes that the CB400 SF had over the years, and we'll talk about some notable cons that users have experienced on this motorcycle. Before we continue, I do want to mention this video was made from a suggestion and a comment. If you have any motorcycles you'd like me to review, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll keep them in mind when I'm making motorcycle reviews in the future. Being that this motorcycle was in production for 30 years, Damn! speaks volumes on its own, from 1992 all the way to 2022. Being first unveiled at the 29th Tokyo Motor Show in 1991 as the 400cc version of the CB1000 Super 4. This CB400 SF was sold at first only in Japanese markets, but in 2008 they started to sell in Southeastern Asian and Australian markets and never made its way as a brand new bike to the American shores. This motorcycle has a 399cc liquid-cooled parallel engine with a six-speed transmission and being chain-driven. Its top speed is 115 miles per hour, and it's recorded to make 55 horsepower at 11,000 RPM and 29 foot-pounds of torque at 9,500 RPM, with it redlining at 12,500 RPM. The CB400 is relatively not that heavy of a bike, with it only weighing approximately 440 pounds. But I will say, if you're a taller rider, it might not be the most comfortable ride due to its shorter seat height of 29.7 inches, but it does make up for it with its 4.8 gallon fuel capacity tank size, with it averaging 46 miles per gallon, which gives you approximately 216 miles in range between fill-ups. Now, let's get into all the changes that the CB400 SF had over the years from 1992 all the way to 2022. In 1992, the predecessor motorcycle for the CB400 SF was the CB1, which is also known as the CB400F. They took that engine and updated it as well as the carburetor. With the engine, they tilted it more backwards for a more erect cylinder bank, and the carburetors they changed from a downdraft to a side draft, but they still remained a CB carb. In 1994, they made updates to the ignition timing due to adapting the pent roof combustion chamber design, which is the most common engine design used today for four valve per cylinder engines that produce relatively high horsepower. They changed the shape of the Kim Chan links to reduce mechanical noise, updated engine mount locations for improved handling, and a new instrument cluster that was added to the CB400 SF. In 1995, they did add more cooling fans to the lower side portion of the cylinder, and they created the Special Edition Super 4 version R with a sharper rake angle and stiffer suspension. In 1996, they did create a new Special Edition, the Super 4 version S, and they also updated the front brake disc in order to reduce the tendency for it to warp. 1997 brought updates to the carburetor air funnels. Oh yes, but we are not done yet. In 1999, that's when they had major engine improvements through Honda's VTEC system that improved the volumetric efficiencies of the four-stroke internal combustion engine, resulting in a higher performance at higher RPMs and lower fuel consumption at lower RPMs. The VTEC, it's described as a variable valve timing and lift electronic control and stands for valve timing electronically controlled. VTEC is distinctly different from the standard VVT, which is variable valve timing systems, which only change the valve timings and do not change the camshaft profile or the valve lift in any ways, while the VTEC system uses two or occasionally three camshaft profiles and hydraulically selects between profiles. With this change, they did create the CB400 Hyper VTEC. A lightweight aluminum muffler was adapted to the motorcycle. Also as well, a shorter wheelbase, lower engine mount positioning, and new front suspension, all for a better handling. And with all these changes, the weight was reduced to the motorcycle by 13 pounds. 
The only major change in 2000 was a stronger combination switch to the tier theft. In 2002, Honda slightly changed the operation of the VTEC system to trigger at 6,300 RPM rather than prior at 6,750 RPM. They also made changes to the ignition timing map, updated to an LCD instrument cluster, added an ignition security system. The air intake noise was reduced by enhancing the surface rigidity of the air cleaner case. And they also added a lighter and smaller oil filter, as well as updating the front calipers. They titled the model for 2002 as the CB400 Hyper VTEC Spec 2. 2004 brought more changes to the VTEC system, with it now triggering at 6,750 RPM in sixth gear, but remaining at 6,300 RPM in gears one through five. They also updated the ignition timing map with these changes, and they increased the quantity of glass wool in the exhaust pipe collector to reduce the exhaust noise in order to comply with government regulations. The seat height was slightly lowered, there was updates to the front suspension for better ergonomics, a new headlamp, LED tail lights, and they created a new fuel tank design. 2005 added a preload adjustment mechanism for the front suspension, as well as a new high-density polyurethane material for a seat cushioning creating a more comfortable seating. And they also created a new half-bearing version of the CB400. The only change for 2006 was that they added a larger ignition coil supply for a more stable spark at lower RPMs. In 2008, that's when they created the CB400 SF Hyper VTEC Revo, which introduced fuel injection to the bike. They added an idle air control valve for improved fuel economy and reliability. They revised engine materials that reduced the engine weight by 4.4 pounds. There were slight revisions to the VTEC again. A new independent cylinder ignition timing map was added. They revised the air intake geometry and they created a larger stainless steel muffler to contribute to fuel efficiency. The engine mounting position was again updated for improved handling, and that's when they added the option to add ABS to the bike. In 2014, they made some revisions to the frame geometry that brought the handlebars higher and closer to the rider and created a more upright seating position. They updated the instrument cluster and added a central stand to the motorcycle, as well as a 12 volt power socket that plugs into the wire harness. 2018 brought the project big one from CB400 SF, with it being their 25th anniversary. They created a smaller two-chamber muffler, updated the throttle bodies to comply with emission regulations, and it was in this year that, inc that they increased their horsepower from 39.5 horsepower at 11,000 RPM to 55 horsepower at the same RPM. They did increase their torque by two foot-pounds from 27 foot-pounds of torque at 10,000 RPM to 29 foot-pounds of torque at 9,500 RPM, with some changes to the front and rear suspension. Since 2018, the next big change was in 2022, and that's when they discontinued the motorcycle. That's when Japan had implemented stronger and newer emission regulations, and which caused motorcycles to either have to comply and change the way they are, or to be discontinued. Now, Honda probably could have easily changed and modified the CB400 SF to comply with these new regulations. However, due to reasons unknown except internally, they decided to discontinue the CB400 SF in total. No, God, please, no, no! I am going to list all the notable cons at once since I figured it was just a little bit easier to do this. Now, with some of these cons, I can understand and I do feel they are justifiable, well, the other ones that I have seen on the internet when doing my research, I don't really feel like they belong or are justifiable to be called as a con for this motorcycle. But I'll let you be the judge of that and we'll go from there. The first con we're going to go over is the lack of storage underneath the seat. Now, for the type of motorcycle it is, it being more of a daily commuter and not some tour motorcycle, this should be somewhat expected. You can't expect every single motorcycle to be able to do every single little thing. That's like complaining about a sport bike not having enough uh, personal luggage room. It's made to go fast. It's not made to carry all your personal regrets and personal baggage. And if you really need to carry those on your ride with you, look into adding a luggage rack on the back or carry a backpack. Otherwise, I don't mean this with no salt, but it's not really made for that. The second complaint I frequently noticed about this motorcycle was its cost. 
And now I'm talking about the cost of when it was released. Definitely not now since it's not in the market and you can only buy them used. But when it was released from the factory, it was definitely not on the lower end compared to its rivals in the 400cc class range, with its cost being approximately 12300 to 13800 depending if you want ABS options or not, with it being an over $1,000 price difference with choosing ABS on the bike. But I will say, with regardless of that, you definitely do get that Conda quality in its build, so there is a good value behind that price. We've already covered the complaint of the low seat height, so I'm going to segue into our third con, which is going to be about its suspension. There has been complaints about the suspension having difficulty to retain its composure when going over bumps when riding two up. I don't want to say that, well, it is a 400cc motorcycle, so what do you expect from it? But, you know, maybe if you do want to get this motorcycle and ride two up, you should probably look into some aftermarket suspension upgrades. Now, the final con I'm going to go over is the complaint of lack of power. But come on, guys, it's a 400cc motorcycle. What do you expect? That's like complaining about a compact car not being able to outpace a sports car out on the racetrack. Each vehicle or motorcycle in its own niche has its own strengths. So to be able to say fully that, oh, well, you know, it sucks that this motorcycle, which is a 400cc motorcycle, isn't the strongest motorcycle out there is rather silly. So I am just putting this out there just because I did see it quite a few times mentioned that they wished it had a little bit more power. But it's like, what do you expect? And I've said this before, and I'll say it once again, not every motorcycle needs to be some mean street machine or a rival to Valentino Rossi. Overall, the CB400 seamlessly blends nostalgia with modern performance. It's a fun, beginner-friendly motorcycle with a sporty feel to it, and its build quality is really as good as it gets, with Honda's engines being known, metaphorically, to be bulletproof. Now, there has been some rumor of Honda releasing a new version of the CB400 SF after 2024, but only time will tell if this is true. But until then, y'all ride safe, subscribe for more motorcycle-related content, ring that notification bell, and most of all, I really hope y'all have a great day.